Hello, friends, and welcome back to FaceTime. This is Coach Nick here once again for another great week of episodes and great topics that we will cover here on FaceTime. This week, we are going to be talking about TV and movies. What I like about this topic is there are so many choices, there are so many channels, and there are so many different options that you can have right at our fingertips from choosing. This week we will talk a little bit about the history behind television, but our main emphasis this week is talking about shows that I personally feel are appropriate for you kids to be able to watch, especially during the time that we're in right now, when we're at home and you need something really good to watch or something to do. I have some great choices that you'll be able to get a chance to watch and enjoy on your own time. Before we jump into today's topic, what I do want to introduce to you is a little history behind television. I think some of you younger audience members here, some of you kids, may think that TV has been around forever. Well, it has not. It was a premium back in the day. And what I mean by premium, it, it was very difficult and very expensive to have a television at the turn of 1900. TV was first invented around 1920s, the very early 1920s, but it wasn't for everybody. It was for more, the, more so the rich or the upper class. It wasn't until about the 1950s where television first became something called a commonplace in the home, meaning that it was something that you would find in pretty much the good majority of people's homes. But TV was pretty limited back in the day. There weren't that many channels. There weren't that many uh, programs and shows like there are today, and there certainly was not something that was high def where you would get the most clear picture that you could watch on your TV screen. TV back in the day was actually in black and white. Have any of you ever got a chance to see a program in black and white? If you have, shoot us a comment here because I think that would be pretty fascinating to see if you've actually got a chance to see what TV looked like way back in the day. Color television didn't really start to get formulated, really something that became custom on televisions until about the late 1960s into the early 1970s. That's when color programming started to become something consistent like we see today. Back in the day, children's television, there was, again, a limited amount of options that you could be able to enjoy. TV back at the time was first getting started, there weren't that many options. But a couple programs that there were for kids were something called Captain Kangaroo and Howdy Doody. Your grandparents may have gotten a chance to watch them at some point. If they have, that would be a good idea to maybe talk about what TV looked like back in the day uh, with them. Because they may have a, a really cool story that they might want to share with you about the times that they grew up in a, in a world and society that television was such an unknown. You also had back in the day, bet uh, besides the Captain Kangaroos and Howdy Doody, you had cartoons. So cartoons could range from anything from your Bugs Bunnies, your Mickey Mouse, uh, some Disney themed um, cartoons that you could watch. But it was so limited. It took a network which was at the time before a network called PBS. It was called NET. NET was the National Education uh, Television Network. And that's where some programs um, really started for kids', kids uh, programs. One of those programs happened to be something called Sesame Street. Another program happened to be something that is near and dear to my heart, and a lot of people who know me uh, know that this show was something that I grew up on, and that was Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. PBS didn't start and get really founded and launched until 1971. Basically, NET started PBS. So if you have gotten a chance to watch the network PBS, you may have some favorite programs. And right now, I would like to ask you that question. First of all, have you got a chance to watch any programs on PBS? Whether that was lately or back in the day, shoot us a comment here so we can get a chance to know which shows that you might have seen over the years. Are there any shows that you particularly liked a lot? If you liked a particular one of the shows on PBS, let us know on that. How about any shows that you disliked? We can agree and disagree on a lot of different topics. So if there's something that you liked, 
shoot us a comment. If you're something that you didn't like, we want to know some of that information too. I want you, if you have gotten a chance to talk about or think about some of those shows that you might have had a chance to look uh, to watch, uh, rank them. I personally have a ranking system that we will talk about today on our program for some of the shows on PBS. I know that PBS has changed and a lot of these networks have changed over the years. Some now are much more animated or cartoon based. Some, back when I grew up, were more real life. So they had characters or, or people that played on these programs that were real people. I personally have always been a big advocate for the real life environment. So a show, for instance, like a Sesame Street or a Mr. Rogers, I always liked that knowing that that was a real person that was coming through the screen that was talking to me. Almost in a way like it was a friend or somebody or somebody that you wanted to listen to or a teacher, something like that. I always enjoyed having that element when I watched programs when I was a kid. Right now, I think it is a great opportunity for us to talk about some of the PBS Kids shows from my generation that I have gotten a chance to watch. I right now would like to do a basic uh, opening of what a program of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was like. Have any of you ever had a chance to see this program? If you have, shoot us a comment. If you haven't, this is now an opportunity for you to watch what an opening of a program is like for Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers started in um, started on television in 1968 and ran until 2001. He had a incredible, incredible career and an incredible program that always had different themes and topics. So, for instance, on the program that we're going to see a little bit of right now, the topic is learning. So many different ways to learn. Let's take a look and see what a opening of that program was like, then we'll talk about it when we come back. neighborhood a beautiful day for a neighbor would you be mine could you be mine it's a neighborly day in this beauty wood a neighborly day for a beauty would you be mine could you be mine i have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you i've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you so Let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine, could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Please won't you be my neighbor? I am so glad we're neighbors. Do you know what might be in here? It's a wooden box, and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things in it, different sizes. I'll take it to the kitchen and show you. Mm -hmm. Hi, fish. That's one. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight things. And do you know what they are? They're batteries. Hmm? These are two D batteries and four C batteries and two AA batteries. 
Mr. McFeely knows I'm interested in all sorts of things, and last night he called me and said, if you bring the batteries, I'll bring the things that go with them. So he told me what kind of batteries to bring. And here they are. I don't know what he'll bring to, to go with these batteries, but I was just thinking, I have something here already that uses battery power. Flashlight. I'll show you the battery in here. See, this is a big battery. Look at that, how big that is. Even bigger than the D batteries. Has anybody ever taught you how to use a flashlight? When I get this together, I'll just... There. Maybe I'll just uh, close the curtains so it'll be a little darker here in the kitchen. Now, if that was your first time getting a chance to see what his program, Mr. Rogers' program, is like, basically every time the show starts, it opens with him coming through the door, takes off his jacket, puts on a sweater, puts on his sneakers, and then he talks with you about something that he might have brought in. On this episode here, he brought in some batteries. They could be used for all different sorts of things, and somebody would be on their, their way um, to show him what those batteries could be used for. What I liked about the program a lot, too, is there was consistency. You knew exactly kind of what you were going to get. You knew he was going to come through the door. You knew he was going to visit with you. You knew he was going to teach you or learn something, um, something creative or something unique. The program then also ended pretty much the same way. I am going to share this link here for those that would like to, an opportunity to watch this program in full on their own time. I am going to fast forward this now to the ending of this program, which is pretty consistent on how all his programs ended. So let's take a look at that next. I hope that you'll remember I like and that's true. And you'll find that the people who love you best are the ones you learn the most from. And the more they teach you and the more you learn, the better feeling you have about yourself and the world we live in. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling you're growing inside. And when you wake up, ready to say I think I'll make a snappy new day it's such a good feeling a very good feeling the feeling you know that I'll be back when the week is new and I'll have more ideas for you and you'll have things you'll want to talk about I will too always make it a special day and a special week. I'll be back next time. Bye. So right there you got a chance to see how an opening and how a closing of the program went. As you heard at the end right there, pretty much every program he would say, I like you exactly as you are. And those are things that as a child or as even a person uh, are important things to know and important things to learn. You know, that we're all unique and that we're all one person and that no matter who you are, you're special. Those messages right there are something that, especially in the times that we're in right now, are truly, truly important with um, everything that's going on. So this is one of the examples of a program that I highly recommend you getting a chance to watch. Definitely makes you feel good when you watch it. The next thing that I want to share with you is another program that I've always been a big advocate for, and that program is called, uh, if I can get it up on my screen here, Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow is another program that's been on PBS for many years, and it's still going on another uh, platform right now. I believe it's on Amazon Prime that new episodes are coming out. But here's a program that features the host, LeVar Burton, and he pretty much travels all around the world and shares stories and books with kids um, that he feels are great to be able to learn from and share with one of you. 
Um, I am going to share an opening now. I don't know if you've ever gotten a chance to read. If you've read a, if you give a moose a cookie, I know I read that as a child, and this is how the opening of Reading Rainbow goes. So let's take a look at that. Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book. Reading here at the bowling center. It's so much fun. There's something about the thunder of the rolling balls and the clatter of the crashing pins that makes you want to play. And everyone who bowls brings their own personality to the action. chain reaction begins and ends with a bowling ball. But a chain reaction can start with anything. And in this book, it all starts with one little cookie. It's called, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. If you give a mouse a cookie, by Laura Joffe Numeroff. Illustrated by Felicia Bond. Read by Beth Howland. If you give a mouse a So right there, you're able to see another example of how his program opens up on Reading Rainbow. And I made a mistake, too. It's not if you give a moose a cookie. It's if you give a mouse a cookie. I think there's a version of if you give a moose um, a muffin is the story um, I was thinking about too. Pretty similar though. But what I like about this show right here is again, it's, it's educating kids like you on some great books that you can get a chance to read and check out at your local library or right now uh, online. You can also read some books online too. You may have some of these books that are shared on Reading Rainbow um, on your at your house or maybe a friend or a family member has them too. So that's another uh, great example right there of a program that I highly recommend um, checking that out. And we'll give you the links for all these episodes um, so maybe there might be a particular theme of interest that you like. The next program that I would like to take a look at is something that I've, I loved when I was a kid. Um, I think some of you may probably still play with trains um, or have train sets at your home. This program was called Shining Time Station. Um, it is a program that is no longer on, but I think it's called Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. That This is where um, Thomas the Tank Engine was um, started from, from this program called Shining Time Station. Let's take a look at their opening, see how that goes, and then we'll talk about it more uh, when we come back. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there. Station. No, 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 that's, that's not 
cheerful enough. Welcome to Shining Time Station, pride of the Indian Valley Railroad. That's better. Welcome to Shining Time. What are you doing? Oh, I'm practicing for the new tourist train. You know, planning a tour for so many people is trickier than I thought. What's this? I pop in, as usual, and next thing I know, I'm all tangled up in red licorice. I can't stand when this happens. Well, it's Schemer again, Mr. Conductor. This is his new tourist booth for all the visitors we're expecting here today. Well, Stacy, what does Schemer's mashed potato mix have to do with Shining Time Station? Or this? Well, I'm sad to say they have nothing to do with Shining Time Station, but Schemer thinks he can sell them, so that's why they're here. Which is a very sad story indeed. And that machines are good for some things, but there are other things only a human can do. After all, even the engines on the island of Sodor need engineers and conductors. And when the engines forget that, things can get very confused. Let me show you what I mean. Henry and Gordon were lonely when Thomas left the yard to run his branch line. They missed him very much. They had more work to do and had to fetch their own coaches. The big engines thought they were too important to fetch coaches. James grumbled too. We get no rest, we get no rest, they all complained. But the coaches only laughed. You're lazy and slack, you're lazy and slack, they answered. Altogether, the engines were causing Sir Topham Hatt a great deal of trouble. The big stations at both ends of the line each have a turntable. Sir Topham had it made them so that the tender engines can be turned round. So because as you can dangerous. see here from the Thomas the Tank Engine uh, Shining Time Station show, you had this little guy, and that was the Mr. Conductor, and he lived in the uh, picture on the wall. Obviously pretend, of course. And each episode he would tell stories about the uh, tank engines, and bring you to their land about maybe some different problems or conflicts that they may have um, they may have had and tried to solve them from these special stories that were here. I love that show when I was a little kid. I got these trains, uh, train sets and all kinds of different things from that program right there. We will share that link and other episodes for you to take a look at if that's something that you are interested in looking at. The final program that we were going to look at here from PBS happens to be uh, an, a classic. And I know it's for younger audiences, but I know when I was younger, I grew up with Sesame Street. Uh, Sesame Street is the longest running children's programming on television. It started in 1969 and is still on to present day right now. It's featured big characters such as, uh, no, no pun intended there, Big Bird. Um, it's had Elmo, it's had Kermit. Uh, all, uh, all Bert and Ernie, all different sorts of uh, characters from this program. Let's take a look at a classic episode of right here of what Sesame Street looks like. It actually features a visit from uh, Mr. Rogers. So let's take a look and see a little bit more about the about um, uh, Sesame Street. Hello. Hmm. Where have I seen that face before? Well. No. Hi, everybody. Oh, hi. Nice and cool in here. Oh, yes. yeah, this well, cooler. this is going to be one of you people's lucky day. Oh, oh, really? Why is that, Big Bird? Today is the day of the great foot race between me and Mr. Snuffleupagus. That's and cool. one of you gets to be the judge. Oh, no, 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 no. Big Bird, I love you. You're my dearest friend. But darling, I am not going out in that hot sun to judge a race between you and some imaginary friend. Mm -mm. Oh, oh no. come on. Oh, uh, excuse me, mister, um, I, I, I'm going to have a little race here. Would you mind helping me in being a judge? See, what we're going to do is we're going to have a foot race here, and you could be the judge for me. Well, I'm waiting for someone to come for me, and when he comes, I'll have to leave. Oh, well, that's okay, because this won't take long, see? 
Mr. Snuffleupagus and I are going to race all the way around the block, and then when we get back here, we got this is the finish line, and you decide who gets here first, okay? Well, I'll stay as long as I can. Oh, good. I appreciate it. Oh, this is going to be fun, fun, fun. past the Count's Mansion, and then all the way past, uh, then there's the package store at the corner, and then we turn left there, and then finally we come down, past the fix-it shop, and then there's a finish line right in my eyes, and then when I open them, you'll be gone. You're still here. Hmm. It's hard Gee. to understand, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes it's very hard to understand the difference between what's real and what's pretend. Oh, it really is. <sighs> Maybe I could... So a little trip down, down uh, memory lane there for me with um, some of the characters from Sesame Street. Um, again, one of the greatest kids' programs that's uh, still currently on air. Um, so if you'd like to check some of those episodes out, there are years and years of episodes. Um, check it out. Have you gotten a chance to see Sesame Street? If you have, shoot us a comment. If you haven't, shoot us a comment as well because we want to know more about that too. I hope all of you got a chance to enjoy these episodes that I shared with you. I didn't watch them all, but we will share these links with all of you so you can get a chance to watch them in full on your own time. I think you're going to really like tomorrow's topic, and tomorrow's uh, topic that we will cover from television is Nickelodeon. So we will cover some shows um, that might be some of your favorites that you watch on uh, Nick. Could be Nick Jr. TV or regular Nickelodeon. Uh, we'll cover some of the cartoons that were that still air on that network, and a little bit of history about when Nickelodeon um, started and became one of the great networks that there is for kids to watch TV today. I will see you next time here on another episode of FaceTime. This is Coach Nick wishing you all a great rest of your day.